But not everyone believes that biology is destiny. For many scientists, it's your experiences in life that count. Your upbringing, your education, your environment. Chief among these scientists is psychologist John Watson, who offers a theory that is the mirror opposite of eugenics. This was the heyday of hereditarians and geneticists who said that human beings were constrained by their genetic inheritance. And Watson was saying that this is baloney, that human beings were shaped solely by their environment. Over the years, Watson studies the behavior of babies, hundreds of them. To Watson, we arrive in the world of blank slate, tabula rasa. Nearly everything is learned. Even things we think are instinctual, like fear. To prove that environment is more powerful than genetics, Watson designs an experiment for an infant known as Little Albert. He's so confident, he films it for posterity. At first, Albert shows little fear, even when Watson places a burning newspaper in front of him. Albert is also unafraid when he encounters a white rat for the first time in his life. But then, Watson shows Albert the rat accompanied by a loud clanging noise. One of the few things that upsets little Albert. And he does it again. And does it again. Eventually, Albert learns to fear not just the rat, but all furry things, even without the loud noise. In Watson's mind, the little Albert experiment is a success because it proves that fears are learned, not inherited. Watson calls his theory behaviorism and begins to popularize it. He urges parents to take active control of their children's upbringing by shaping their environment. To think of the home as a scientific laboratory. But Watson's interest in childhood is purely professional. He didn't like children much. He referred to them in one of his many statements as always squalling and shouting and dirty and wanting to be fed and sort of a nuisance. It's clear he didn't particularly like them in his own environment. But he felt that the good of society required shaping individuals right from day one and to do that right from day one you have to start with the babies ebullient and self-promoting watson gathers a wide and appreciative audience which holds in high esteem any scientific thinking on the subject of child rearing science was increasingly important in the popular mindset if science said something if uh, scientists tested, if scientists experimented, well then it must be so. But the appeal of behaviorism runs deeper. Its egalitarian philosophy and outlook seems to reflect the very spirit of democracy. Watson was the voice of the American dream. And the American dream was that this is the land of opportunity. You can become what you would like to be even if you're not there yet. And at least, if you don't do it in, in your lifetime, this is the land in which your children can do it.